and Dukhan, the drought, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Hamim, Allah is praiseworthy, the Lord of all honor. This perfect book that makes the truth perspicuously clear bears testimony to the above statement. Truly, we reveal this book in a night full of blessings. It has been our wont to warn people against evil. During this night, every matter full of wisdom and substance is explained distinctly. Every matter to be decided and done by our own command. Verily, we have ever been sending messengers. As a mercy from your Lord, behold, he is the all-hearing, the all-knowing, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that lies between them. If you would only be convinced to have faith in something, have faith in him. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. He alone gives life and causes to die. He is your Lord, as well as the Lord of your forefathers. Yet they have no faith. They are steeped in doubt and occupied with unreal things. So, Prophet, watch for the day when the sky will bring about a clear drought that will envelop these people. This is that woeful calamity which is foretold. Seeing this, the people will cry out, Our Lord, rid us of this calamity. Truly we will be believers. How shall they take heed now in this condition? For there has already come to them a great messenger telling the right from the wrong. Yet they turned away from him and said, He is a man tutored by others a man bereft of his senses. Look, we shall relax your punishment for a short while, but you are sure to revert to your former evil ways. After this respite, we shall again seize you with the mighty onslaught one day. Then we shall inflict a sure and stern punishment. And we afflicted the people of Pharaoh with a torment before them, for there had come to them too a noble and respectable messenger, saying, Deliver to me the servants of Allah. In fact, I am to you a messenger, faithful to my trust. And do not rise up in defiance of Allah. Surely I bring to you a clear authoritative proof. And I have taken refuge with my Lord and your Lord, lest you should stone me to death. You had better leave me alone if you do not believe in me. Thereupon, when they denied him, he, Moses, called to his Lord, saying, These are a people guilty indeed. Then the order was, Set forth with my servants in a watch of the night, for you are going to be chased. And leave when the sea is calm and not in tide, by its depressed portion, crossing on the dunes. Surely these pursuers are a host of people doomed to be drowned. So they were drowned, and many a garden and springs they left behind. And the cornfields, and how beautiful a place of high status, and the prosperity and comfort that they enjoyed and took delight in. That is how it shall happen now with the rejecters of the prophet. And we gave all such things to another people. And neither the residents of the heaven nor those of the earth mourned over them, nor were they reprieved. Look, we delivered the children of Israel from the disgraceful torment. From the torment of Pharaoh, he was surely haughty and one of the transgressors. And we chose them on the basis of our knowledge over all their contemporary people. And we gave them some of the signs wherein were placed unmixed blessings. These people of this time do say, It is but our first death, the only one we will encounter, and after that we shall never be the revived ones. So bring our forefathers back to life if you are truthful in what you say about resurrection. Are they superior to the people of 
Yemenite king Tuba, and to those who flourished even before them? We destroyed them all because they were certainly guilty. And we did not create the heavens and the earth and all that lies between them just because we were doers of some purposeless work. That we created them, it was only for an eternal purpose, to establish the truth, yet most of them do not know this. Verily the day of decision is the promised time appointed for all of them, the day when no friend shall avail a friend, in the least, nor shall they be helped. Different, however, shall be the case of those to whom Allah will show mercy. Verily, he alone is the mighty, the ever-merciful. Verily, the despicable tree of Zakum shall be the food of the arch sinners. It will act like molten copper. It will boil in their bellies as the boiling of scalding water. The word shall then pass about the guilty. Take hold of him, then drag him into the midst of hell. Again, pour boiling water upon his head by way of torment to him. It will be said to him, Suffer this punishment of yours which you doubted. You deemed yourself as if you were the mighty, the honorable one. This, of course, is the very punishment about which you used to wrangle. As for the righteous, they shall be lodged in havens of peace and security, in the midst of a land of gardens and springs. They shall wear fine silk and heavy brocade and will be sitting face to face. Thus shall it actually happen, and we shall pair them with pure maidens having beautiful large eyes. They will order therein every kind of fruit and will be safe and secure. They will meet therein no death after the first death met by them in the world. And Allah saved them from the torment of the hell. All this will take place by way of grace from your Lord. That is the very great achievement indeed. And we have made this Quran easy in your Arabic tongue so that the people may take heed. Now await their end, for they are also awaiting yours.